Hey guys, this is 18.2. Welcome back to Zoo Tycoon Complete Collection. My recording crashed. I'm starting over. Last time we finished up with sharks. Now we're getting on to cephalopods. I have already built a Pacific octopus exhibit and gone into great detail about how awesome they are and how fascinating creatures they are. And now I get to do it again. The reclusive giant octopus of the Pacific should be a source of great entertainment for your guests, if you can coax him out of his house. Fun fact, the Pacific Octopus exhibit requires a surprisingly deep uh, tank, even though they live in more shallow water, and more importantly, in their den. These gigantic cephalopods can grow up to 30 feet in diameter, measured from arm to arm. They build and maintain homes throughout their Pacific habitats and are very reluctant to come out and entertain visitors. During their three to five year lifespans, the giant octopus, one of the largest of the invertebrates, can grow to a mass of over 250 pounds. Uh, slight technicality, the m pounds do not measure mass. Minor technicality there. Pounds measure weight. Most people have heard of the eight arms of the octopus, but few know of their specialized purposes. The two dorsal arms are used for exploring. Even a blind octopus can feel and grasp its way across the ocean floor. In other words, these are basically sup uh, supplementary... Uh, not actually sight, but awareness of surroundings. The next two arms are the offensive arms used for grabbing. So they search with these, grab their prey with these. The remaining four arms are the ventral arms used for anchorage. Uh, in other words, the other four either keep it in place or help it move uh, across the seabed. If you watch an octopus move, uh, those rear four tentacles you'll see pushing the octopus. Unless they're jetting, which we'll get to. An octopus always tries to have some contact with the seafloor, preferring to avoid drifting with the currents. Fun fact, these Pacific octopus never come in contact with the seafloor. All eight of these arms can be elongated considerably, but the oct octopus can also constrict itself, squeezing itself into very small spaces. Each arm is covered in two rows of sucker discs that are one to two inches in diameter and can regenerate if lost. The blue-blooded octopus... Yes, it's oct yes, the Pacific octopus's blood is actually blue. Has two gills for gas circulation with a circulatory system similar to that of a fish. Slight correction. It's the respiratory system that's similar to a fish. The circulatory system of the Pacific octopus involves three hearts. Uh one heart for each set of gills, and then one heart for the remainder of the body. Most fish do not have three dedicated hearts. They have dedicated bloodstream, um, and they may even have multiple hearts. But one per gill plus the remainder, uh, I'm not aware of in any fish. The main part of the body, the mantle, has openings used to renew the water in the body cavity. This water is used as part of the octopus's jet propulsion system for movement. The favorite foods of the giant octopus are crabs and shrimp. When they cannot find these foods, they are also known to eat scallops, snails, fish, turtles, all kinds of crustaceans, and other mollusks, even other octopi. Yes, that is correct. The octopus is a mollusk, 
All cephalopods are mollusks. However, they are mollusks with their shells on the inside. And in the case of the Pacific octopus, it's basically two bone plates. Um, and then it's beak. The beak is not actually part of the shell, but it has two bone plates. They're very small. But that's what has it qualify as a mollusk. Since many of these animals have exterior shells or exoskeletons, the octopus needs to be an expert can opener. Except that In a lot of cases, it's easier to open a can than some of its than open some of its prey. First, they subdue their prey by spitting poison onto them. Then they bite them open, pull them apart with their suckered arms, or drill through a particularly hard open shell with their beaks. Once open, the octopus injects saliva into the flesh of its prey to soften the meat so that it can be sucked out. Uh, biology note here. That might sound a bit odd, but humans essentially can do the same thing. Uh, not to the extent of the octopus. There are enzymes in the saliva that react with certain parts of, that react with certain parts of food to break them down to make it easier to digest. In the case of humans, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, carbohydrates, a number of carbohydrates, uh, start being broken down by our saliva before it gets down. The octopus's enzymes are obviously more specialized towards, uh, towards muscle. When not hunting, most octopi are busy avoiding predators. Large fish, sea otters, elephant seals, sea lions, and other octopi all hunt the giant octopus, and without a hard shell or much of a defense system, they must count on being sufficiently alert to escape predators. My list also does specify that, and as you might recall from previous episodes, uh, sharks will eat them, and whales will eat them, which includes, of course, the orca. Also, because it really stood out to me, I don't remember whether it was National Geographic or, or um, I think it's Oceana Encyclopedia, I'm not 100% certain on the name, specified that lingcod will eat Pacific octopus. I don't know why it didn't say large fish like all the other sources, but I figure, hey, they say Lingcod, let's throw it in there. The giant octopus has several features helping it escape predators. The first of these is homochromatism. The ability of the octopus to take on the coloration of its surroundings. Okay, so what it means to be homochromatic. Uh, we looked through it, we looked through the words, little lesson here. Uh, chroma means color. Homo means same. Homochroma is same color. And the tism or tick or whatever else is just telling you how, the, what type of word it is. Now, this does not mean it takes on one color. Uh, homo, uh, uh, when it's acting homochromatic, it blends in with the same texture as whatever it's in. This is not to be confused with heterochromatic uh, features, which, incidentally, the Pacific octopus can do, but this doesn't really say in here. Heterochromatism means that 
they can just change their colors to whatever they want. During mating season, they'll go they'll go all bright and vibrant, and they're pretty and all that. So they are both homochromatic and heterochromatic. If you want to get really technical, I would consider homochromatism a subset of heterochromatism. Okay. Latin lesson over. Using cells known as chromatophores and iridocytes, the octopus can change its color to match its surroundings. An octopus can change color in as little as two seconds. Side note, that has since been, there have since been octopus, uh, octopi clocked at under one second, and I believe the world record is 0.2 seconds. I'm not 100% sure on that. Color changes are used both for camouflage and to express emotions. A red octopus is an angry octopus. The giant octopus can also create a cloud of ink to cover its getaway. Most of the defense systems of a giant octopus center on being able to make a quick escape. An important part of this, this plan is to have a den to escape to. All octopi have a den, hole, or home. An octopus den may be a cave or a man-made object like a pot. Octopi are generally found in the ocean floor in water less than 65 feet deep. Uh, think about it, this probably is about 65 feet deep, so that works. It's just really weird within the context of the game. When choosing a den site, an octopus will avoid very shallow water, since waves and other disturbances are more common in shallow water, and these can move objects in the den and get sand inside the animal's mantle. In addition to hiding their houses, octopi build pebble defenses around their homes, and maintain a trash pile known as a midden, some distance from the house. Female octopi have another use for their houses. Once in their lifetime, a female octopus will spend several days laying 20,000 to 100,000 eggs in four-inch cylindrical egg sacs suspended from a wall within her house. She will spend the next five to seven months tending, cleaning, and aerating these eggs. I find aerating is an interesting word choice, but hydrating means something completely different, so I understand why it's used. Generally, the female will not eat or leave the den during this period, since her constant attention to the eggs is needed to help keep them alive. Because of this, female octopi generally die soon after their eggs hatch, uh, and they do resort to auto-cannibalism, because they're not going out hunting, They the only food there is itself. Yep. And the male octopus doesn't fare much better than the female. Uh, once it mates, it's, it dies within a few months as well. Which is why, despite their intelligence and their abilities, humans have are the dominant species, not octopi. It's because they die after mating. So, other fun facts, uh, when using propulsion, they can travel up to 25 miles per hour. Uh, as far as conservation status goes, they are not evaluated, which is good. Uh, because it means they're, no, they're not in danger of extinction at all at the moment. They do live in the temperate Pacific Ocean, specifically. Uh, so, while technically they go up as high as Alaska, I think it's around here in Alaska, uh, further north there they don't go. Um, a couple additional things about their diet. When they said fish... Uh, they do not make, uh, they do not specify that if a small shark wanders into 
range of a hunting octopus, they'll eat the shark. You might notice that a lot of animals will eat things that they are eaten by if they're given the opportunity. And birds. If a bird happens to be in range, they'll eat the bird. Or if something goes wrong with a diving bird, which incidentally is another predator of the octopus that wasn't mentioned, if a diving bird tries to eat an octopus, screws up and dies, the octopus will eat the diving bird. Uh, so, as far as the suction cups on their tentacles, assuming my information is correct, there are over 2,000 suction cups on the octopus, and each uh, each tentacle has approximately 250 uh, cups on each tentacle. That was a redundant statement. And the last fun part. I, me I think I mentioned their circulatory system. Three hearts, one each for gills, and one for the rest of the body. They also have nine brains. One central brain, and then one in each tentacle. And if you want to see what... If you look up uh, an octopus's tentacle being cut off, like if you watch a live octopus being prepared for food, Um, you'll see the tentacle acting independently of the octopus. That's because it has a brain there. Really fascinating and creepy. So that's one cephalopod. And how many cephalopods are there? Well, there are exactly two cephalopods uh, available in marine mania Why am I naming this one Colossus? I right, can't do that. Because the other cephalopod in the game is the giant squid. Which, incidentally, is different from the colossal squid. Apparently. I'm not entirely sure how, or how scientists came to that conclusion. Oh, wait, no. Oh, shoot. No, octopi aren't calamari. Eh, whatever. It, it's, there is an octopus dish. Too shallow. I look how deep these guys like it. And they like tube worms. 
Then I'm just going to assume the Marine Cave. So, the giant squid is one of the marine animals I have personally done the most research on uh, because I mean it's because it's it's a living sea monster it just is now before I go on with what I have found out about the giant squid. Let's see what the game has to say about it. Look at that angle. Oh, that is amazing. And terrifying because I know this means that it is attacking. For many years, the giant squid has been one of the great mysteries of the undersea world. Uh, Archituthus dux, the world's largest invertebrate, was considered a maritime legend for many years. Legend became fact when giant squid remains washed up on beaches were identified. Scientists have recorded over 200 giant squid found on beaches and over 30 found tangled in the nets of DC deep sea sea and over 30 tangled in the nets of deep sea fishermen. Until now, though, no one has ever seen a giant squid alive, much less kept one alive in captivity. Uh, side note we have, in the past couple years, seen... Uh, if you look, you can find photographs of a live giant squid from a deep sea sub-expedition. Um, I don't know if it was a manned sub or an unmanned sub. Either way, got it. So, here's that. The giant squid is a cephalopod, meaning head foot. An animal with a shell on the inside. This inner shell takes the form of a long, flexible rod called the pen or Gladius. No prizes for guessing where that name came from. The answer is the Roman what the Roman sword named the Gladius. Many invertebrates have much higher ratios of brain mass to body mass than the vertebrates they share habitats with, and the giant squid is no exception. These carnivores are formidable hunters. The giant squid has eight arms, each with two rows of suckers, as well as two additional feeding tentacles, ending in toothed suckers. The giant squid encloses its prey in its powerful tentacles and uses its sharp parrot-like beak to break off small bites. It is important to take small bites since the esophagus runs through the, runs through the brain. A large bite could puncture the brain, killing the giant squid. While most other carnivores avoid the giant squid, there are a few predators that are a match for this cephalopod. The sperm whale, in particular, uses giant squid as a main staple of its diet. These whales have evolved a material known as ambergris that permits them to pass the indigestible beaks. However, subduing 60-foot squid isn't easy, and many sperm whales bear scars from their struggles. Uh, I did mention that when I, when I was talking about the sperm whale. Again, if you go to the Museum of Natural His History, I'm pretty sure it's the one in New York, in that marine area, there's a great uh, artistic interpretation of a sperm whale fighting a giant squid. The largest squid discovered uh, to date is a 57 foot long specimen that washed up on the beach. And it really hasn't gotten much longer. 
Although, I'll get to that when I get into into uh, length. It is thought that healthy members of the species may grow to be even longer. Most, most of the organs of any squid are located in the mantle, the large sac in front of the animal's head. On the mantle are two long flaps called fins, as well as the gills the giant squid uses to breathe. Protruding from the giant squid's mantle, beneath its huge eye, the largest eye of any known animal, is the siphon. The siphon is a tube-like organ used for propulsion. By filling the siphon with water and then expelling it, the giant squid can propel itself through the water. Now, I am going to take a break, a, uh, break off here for one of my favorite numbers that I got in all of my research. So the top speed of the giant squid is potentially one of the fastest squids. The number given was potentially one of the fastest squids. Which isn't a number, but I mean it's really hard to tell how fast something can move when you're basically just looking at corpses. How fast was the Tyrannosaurus Rex? Probably faster than an Apatosaurus, I think. You get the idea. Body orientation allows the creature to control the direction of travel. Because its muscles contain ammonium, the giant squid is naturally buoyant and can choose to lazily drift through the water until prey comes into view. No one has ever seen a giant squid feed in the wild, but scientists suspect they feed on large marine creatures. But very little is known about these strange creatures of the deep, however. Scientists are sure that keeping one in captivity won't be easy. Yeah, so moving on. Size. There is a huge debate as to how you're supposed to measure a giant squid for a number of reasons. Do you measure the mantle? Do you measure until the end of the normal tentacles? Do you measure until the end of the attacking tentacles? Do you take the elasticity into account? Because, man, they can stretch. The most agreed on measurement I could find is mantle length and even that's not completely agreed upon but it comes out to the mantle is generally somewhere between 10 to 20 feet and then its tentacles go uh, another 20 feet now uh, and though in that case it's not the elongated ones so these are what closer to what they'd be in the wild the measurement would have the feeding ones be would have the feeding tentacles be to there um the weight oh my word the weight so I found a couple sources that say up to 440 pounds others that say 440 kilograms to 900 kilograms so the weight that I found because nobody agrees on anything is they grow to a maximum of somewhere between 440 and 1000 pounds I'm leaning towards the 440 pound uh, because just because 440 has shown up twice for weight in different units anyway uh, as far as we know they live to be about five years old which is to say all specimens that we have encountered have been 
no greater than five years old. But again, you're only researching the dead ones that floated up, didn't get completely eaten, and washed up on shore. Or the occasional one caught in a net. They are solitary creatures, of course. Uh, because we know so little about them, their conservation status is of least concern. Mostly because we have absolutely no idea how many there are. And it's really hard to, to say how many things there are when you can't find them. Uh, as far as coloration, the coloration here, this reddish pink, uh, that one's a common one. Uh, the most recent photographs showed a more sil uh, silvery white squid. So. We don't even know the natural color of the squid. Uh, they do live. We do know they live in deep oceans worldwide uh, because they've washed up on basically every the shore of every major ocean. Another of my favorite numbers: their litter size. You're like whales have one pup. Several fish will give thousands of eggs. The female giant squid has been recorded of having five kilograms of eggs, which translates into millions of eggs. Sometimes I just love these things that's like, okay, we need to put something here. But we don't have enough data. This one had this one had five kilograms of eggs. All right, how many are there? You want me to count them? Yes, uh, a few million. Good enough. And just hypothesize they eat, or actually, yeah, I don't think they found much in the way of digested remains because of how the squid eats. But odds are they eat squid, fish, shrimps, and small whales. And they are eaten by sleeper sharks and the sperm whale. Not the orca. Now, if a giant squid were to die and go and float up to the orca's feeding range, yeah, the orca will eat it no problem. If the giant squid, for some reason, decided to, it wanted to uh, get closer to the surface and get into an orca's area, the orca would eat it. But as it is, they are in these, they are in the orca-free zone of the oceans. Now. In game, it said the giant squid takes small bites. That's not quite true. It kind of grinds the meat into a pulp and then sucks it out. Uh, but uh, same functionality, different technicality. So I will again make the disclaimer that almost all of the data we have on giant squids is speculative due to the fact that most of the data comes from dead giant squids washing up on shore and deep sea fishermen getting really lucky or unlucky depending on how you look at it so there is very little information at the moment eventually
eventually, I would think. No. I would think that eventually uh, we'll be able to observe more about giant squids and learn more about them. But in the meantime, that's all we know, and really all I feel confident in saying that scientists are speculating. So, that those are the two cephalopods. Uh, I went through the animalist, the animal list for the marine mania animals, and it's looking like I've got uh, two, four, five. It looks like I have about six episodes left of this uh, doing fully marine zoo it, it just works out nicely categorically so if you want to keep seeing this please do remember to like or dislike and or comment and or subscribe as the algorithm demands but for now this has been 18.2 and I will see you guys next time